Okay, so let's. Uh, I'd like to start off talking about uh, mechanical behaviors by talking about Hooke's law. Um, you may be familiar with it, maybe not. Either way, we'll we'll get to it. So, I want to take a look at uh, Hooke's law. Okay, whether you know what that is just yet or not, and what you may have seen, say in um, high school. Well, something like this. You take a spring, okay, and you hang it from maybe the edge of your desk. You put a little hook on, you hang it from, from the edge of your desk, and you put a weight on it. And then it gets a little bit longer, right? And then you put, say, an, another weight on there, and it gets even longer, the weight being heavier. So that's what I'm trying to sketch here. Put another weight on, and that same spring elongates while it's under load. Okay? <clears throat> so let's define a few things here. Let's go on to find the uh, the resting length. The, or we could call it, in fact, the um, what do we call that? The original length. Original length. And there's a usually I'm going to use the letter L, the script letter L is what I like to use, and put a little zero in the subscript there, L naught, you might say, and that's the original length. Okay, then the next thing we do is we say, okay, well, that's fine. Now, what about over here? It's gotten longer. So what are we going to call that? Well, that you could call probably the, uh, I'm going to call that maybe the elongation. Okay, um, and you could use uh, different letters for that. Sometimes you'll use delta L, change in length, that makes a bit of sense. Or often in this particular context, um, X is used, I suppose, because it's a, it's a distance uh, that it's elongated. Then what you do is you take that all the data that you've collected from different loads you've put on the spring, and you plot now force versus that elongation and what you um, may know if you've done this is that it's quite interesting you get um, a straight line you get a linear relationship and there's a slope to that line we often call that slope k in fact that's that k um, often gets a special name and that is the spring constant. Okay, the reason for that being that, um, of course, the equation for a straight line is y equals mx plus b in a general form. b is zero in this case, so we're not plotting y versus x, we're plotting f versus x. So it becomes f equals, now instead of m for the slope, We've got k x f equals kx, and that is actually a special equation. And if you lived long enough, as I long enough ago in the past, as I like to say, you can name things like straight lines after yourself. And so there you go. That's Hooke's law. But it's actually quite important. I, I joke, but it is quite important. And again, there is the spring constant. All right, but there's a big problem with this. There's a big problem with this. The problem is that, sure, it's fine when you're looking at one particular spring, but what if I wanted to compare two springs? And so I could say, see, the, the problem here is this. If I took a small sample, and this time, just for simplicity, so we're not concerned with the, you know, the mechanical, the shape of the spring or anything, I'm going to just make it a cylinder. It's a simple cylinder that we're going to apply a load to like this force. Okay, that little F. Make that a little bit clearer. There we go. Okay, and then we're gonna get another um, another sample, a cylinder as well. But obviously it's a lot bigger, it's larger cross-sectional area, it's fatter if you will. But we can say apply the same force to that. And the last thing I'll clarify here is that we're going to set this requirement that 
both cylinders are made from the same material. Okay, both from same material. Okay, that's pretty messy. I'm sorry, my writing got messy there. Same material. Um, and for example, I don't know, maybe it's a 316L stainless steel or 6061T6 aluminum, whatever. It's some. It's exactly the same material. But what you can appreciate is if I then take those two samples and I plot them, well, I plot the, the relationship between force and displacement, sure, it will be, be linear. That, you know, I mean, for low amounts of load, it should be linear for most materials, especially metals. But are they going to be the same? It's, let's say if I apply, let's say that's the force I'm applying, and you know, I want to see, okay, that's the force I'm going to apply. Well, how much has, and I'll label these for you, see there's A and B. How much has sample A elongated, and how much has sample B elongated? Which one has elongated more for the same force? So for the same force, the narrow one, the tiny little one, you would expect to elongate more. And so we'd, we'd be left with this type of thing for sample A, and this type, this relationship for sample B. And that's a problem because then you end up with two different spring constants, Kb and Ka. And so it would seem as though, it would seem as though um, they have different properties. Seems like different properties That's a problem because we know they were made from exactly the same material. So, how are we going to deal with this? Well, that'll be the next topic, and it's going to be through stress and strain. Thank you.